everybody, my name is Nadia Nilsson, I'm the CFO here at Lightway LiDAR. And today I have the privilege to talk to you about the SF000B. If you missed the launch a few weeks ago, this is the latest addition to the Micro LiDAR family. The SF000B is the smallest and the lightest 50 meter Micro LiDAR in the world today. So today we're going to have a look at what you're going to get in your box if you are the lucky owner of a new SF000B. And a little bit later, we're going to look at the accessories now available on our website to go with your SF000B. So let's have a quick look at what will be in your SF000 box when you receive it. I'm going to take off the sleeve. And inside your black box, you will find your SF000 in its anti-static bag. Careful when you take it out, it is very small, it can easily get away from you, and there she is. So this is our latest baby, as you can see it is really extremely small. This is a 50 meter unit, it measures at 388 readings per second. Although the back end is not IP rated, you can fully embed your unit into your frame using a seal along this section and your lenses are IP65 so your unit will then be protected against the elements. This little shield here in the back is your EMI shield. It also serves as a heat sink. So let's have a look what else is in our box. Below your phone you will find your cables. We supply two so that just in case you need an extra one and we have also included for you a little bracket and some screws to help you get hold of this baby. So this slides on from the back like this. Oops, like that. Right along there. And now you can use your small screws through your holes and embed that into your airframe. So the IP67 came about because we had a customer who asked us if we can make a micro LiDAR small enough to embed into the struts of their multicopter. They wanted multiple LiDARs on that multicopter and they wanted it into, inside the struts. And we had to shrink the SF20, which at that time was the smallest LiDAR, to this new baby of ours that we are very proud of. This unit can be used for um, altimetry, so height above ground when you are taking off or landing. It can be used for terrain following. It can even be mounted forward facing for uh, collision avoidance or position hold. Um, we, th we have multiple interesting um, applications from our customers around the world. So those are the most common applications for our drone customers. So at this time, I'm going to hand over to my colleague Mohit. He is going to tell you guys about the other accessories um, that go with this little baby of ours. Thanks everybody. Thank you very much, Nadia. And now I'll be explaining the accessories to you. We have the breakout board and we have the USB adapter. So let's have a look what's in the box. Here we have the breakout board. What's really nifty about this breakout board, what do you get in the box? You get another extra cable and you get these five adapter boards. What's really nice about it is you can connect this directly to any of your peripheral devices that you would wish to connect it to. I'll explain everything that you can connect this to in a few seconds. Let's move on to the USB connector. So again, we supply you with an extra cable and a nifty little USB adapter that you can connect the SF000 to. This device allows you to connect it to your computer and we'll get into everything in a few seconds. So let's start off with the breakout board. We just get all of the cables that we need and all the little attachments that you can connect it to. Okay, so now that we have everything, let's look at how we can connect the device. So, 
If you look at the back of the SF000, you have a slot for the cable. Let me get my hands on one. There we have it. And we will connect it to, we will connect it to the device. As you will notice on the cable, there's a little groove in it that will that indicates the back of the cable, wind it up with the back of the SF000 and slide it in. Clicks into position as follows. Okay, so let's look at each of the individual breakout boards. So you can easily break this along the join. I'm going to break all of them just to give an individual introduction to each. There we have it. So, let's line it up so that we can get to them easily. Right, so first I'm going to look at the header, the header connector. Again, we have the, connect, the cable, which has a groove in it. Slide it into the connector. Click it into position. Now what you have in front of you, you have an indicator where pin number one is. If you look at our documentation, it indicates what each pin is. So you have the server connector, you have the TX and RX pins, you have the SLA, SDA for, for um, I2C connections, and then you have ground and power. To unclip the cable, very easy, take a small flathead screwdriver and just pop it out. Then let's look at the pixel connectors. We have two of them. We have the Telem port, which is our serial connector, and we have the I2C connection. And what's really nice about the I2C connection is once you have it connected into the board, you can easily connect your other sensors and not break the chain. So let's look at how we would connect it to your pixel. So again, line it up, click it into position, Bring your pixel and just clear up some space on the table. Here we have our pixel device. We have a nice little I2C cable. Plug it into the I2C port and plug it onto the board. And there you have it. You have a nice little mount where you can mount your breakout board to and it's directly connected to your SF000. Same goes for that to import for your serial connection. So let's just unclip everything. Again, small, small screwdriver, and we have it unconnected. So let's get the telem port. So plug it in. Plug it into the telem port which you wish to use, and plug in your SF000 cable. So what's nice is you can now directly connect your SF000 onto your pixel with minimal difficulty. And again, this is a small mounting. You can mount it anywhere on your device or your airframe. And there you go. I've saved the best for last, or second last actually. We have an SF30 D or SF11 connector. What's nice about this is a lot of our customers have already um, implemented a SF11 or SF30D into the into the airframes or UGVs. What's nice about this is now you don't have to cut the cable or rejoin another cable. You use simply the cable which you have and you connect it in. Like so, connect your SF000 and away you go. As mentioned, I've saved the best port for last. I'm going to move the other cables out of the way just so we can see what's going on. So what's really nice about this board is you can connect your servo motor directly to it. You can also connect the SF000 as shown before. Slide it in, clip it in. 
And this allows you to power this SF000 and the server, and it allows you to, to communicate with the SF000 using serial communications. And with this, you can create your own little scanning obstacle avoidance LiDAR. So that was the SF000 breakout board. As you can see, it's easy to connect to any device that you wish to. And it makes life a lot simpler, you know, connecting it to your different various platforms. Next, I'd like to, to introduce the USB connector that we spoke about earlier. So what's handy about this is a lot of users don't know how to interface our devices with their computers. But this little nifty board, all you do is you plug in the SF000 directly to the USB connector and you can plug it into your computer and talk to the device and you can see live streaming of data, you can see the different returns, you can set up your device for your various platforms like your UGVs, your UAVs and whichever other device you'd like to connect this nifty little SF000 to. So let's talk about connecting this device to your laptop. First, go to our website. Under the Resources tab, you will find Lightway Studio. This software is available for Apple. It's available for Windows and Linux. So please download before moving to the next step. Please find the link to download Lightway Studio at the bottom of this video. So let's go back to our SF000 and the USB connector. As shown before, please look for the groove and connect your SF000 to the USB connector. Once you've done this, plug the device directly into your USB port of your laptop or computer. You will notice the LED at the back now switches on. Let's see if we can get it into the camera view without the glare. There we go. You can see the little red light is on on the SF000 that indicates it's switched on. And there's a nice little red LED on your SF000 uh, connector board that also indicates that it's switched on. Now we'll move on to Lightweight Studio to show the different return signals and how you can set up this little device. Okay, so let's launch Lightway Studio. As you can see, the USB adapter now appears in the Lightway Studio window. Click on it. Now, if you go to the parameters tab, you can see the different configurations and settings you can put onto the SF000. Please note, this is the board rate. You have an ISO-Z address. All our devices are default to 102. This can be changed according to the address that you would like to have it. Next, we move to the measurement rate. We have the configurable update rate, as mentioned before by Nadia. This is from 48 readings per second all the way up to 388. To change it, all you do is you select the reading update value you would like, select it, you will see that it's automatically changed. There's no need to plug out the device. This is automatically saved. You also have a distance offset. If you'd like the device to measure an offset from the device as a zero, this meaning that if you have your, your drone and you have a distance offset from the ground to where the device is placed, you can measure this distance and insert it here. The lost signal threshold is the number of lost signals reported, recorded by the device before a lost signal is given out to your various platform that it's connected to. This is any number from one to 250. It's really handy for when you're flying over crops or trees, especially highly reflective surfaces. So even if you do get a lost signal for a second or two, you can filter this out using the lost signal threshold. What's really nice is we've got also the median filter to activate it, to select it, let's change to one. This is to disregard short and unwanted measurements. You can also adjust the median filter size. At the moment, it's to the maximum. 
as you can see. And we've got a smoothing filter and the smoothing filter strength. Let's move on to the distance graph. Now you can see a live distance stream from your SF000. What's really nice about this is you've got the first return and you've got a last return. So let's select the last return. Now measuring towards a wall, you won't really see much of a difference between your first and last return. However, if I shine this out the window, you can immediately see a difference between your first and last return. If I include the distance to the last filtered and ignore the first return row and the last return row, you can actually see the device looking outside the window and inside. Another nice feature about Lightway Studio is if you look at the distance log, you can actually create a distance log by saving wherever you'd like to save it. Let's call it distance log one. And now this creates a distance log as a text file, which you can export to Excel or any other software which you like for your distance log. Another way to view the distance is as buckets. This also shows you your different returns as well as signals received. In future, if there's any firmware updates, please go to the firmware update tab. It'll show you the latest release for firmware. All you do is you click install and this firmware will be installed onto the device. What is also really nice about it is it shows you all the information of your SF000 on the info page. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe to our channel, click the bell icon to get notifications of future updates. And thank you for watching.